But you see her reading reading something. Hints at number two. Mercy, Yacht what do you will, think? Oh, go ahead, Yacht. Uh, Yacht will walk over in Mercy's direction while looking around to see if he can spot anybody else in the area. I you say, look oh, around. Oh, go ahead. I have this letter. It's, uh, and I hand it to him, but I tell him what it is. Sure. I'll go ahead and share it with everybody else now. Looks like the rats are in, are in Donruss. They've taken over the town. Uh, the, the whole town is in, in quarantine, but they're looking for, for help. Rat catchers, healers. Are you yeah. reading that out loud to me? Or us, I should say. Yeah, that's, that's basically... I mean, I just, I just paraphrased the note, basically. Okay, because Fargus is beautiful and illiterate. No. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful and illiterate. I love it. <laughs> Looks like our quest to Donruss has changed. Yeah, it looks like they uh looks like they need help, that's for sure. A plague of rats has descended. Ugh. Well, Lots of disease, they need healers. Oh man. Hearing that I'm gonna go back to the dead horse and take out my knife and start Carving off chunks of meat. <laughs> All right. Uh, the meat looks pretty rotten. I'm going to be honest with you. That's fine. It's not for me. If we're going to go attack rats, might as well draw them out with meat. Oh, that's a great idea. I like that. That's a great idea. Yeah. So there's a couple of empty bags back in the back of the wagon. Yeah, very nice. Knowledge, battle, and monsters. There we go. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but he's... The corpse of the... Both the horse and the... And the human. They're pretty ripe. He's missing his boots. If that if that means anything, he has his clothes, but he's he, he actually he he has on these socks. But yeah, you saw socks. I'm sorry, he's missing his boots. <clears throat> oh, um, I guess the orcs maybe took his boots. Can I tell how he died? Give me a. Give me a medicine check. Uh, pro probably it would be the the single arrow that was in the uh, the middle of his back. Okay, I'm going to assume it's the arrow that killed him then. Yeah, I was going to point probably. out the obvious and say, you know, arrow. <laughs> <laughs> yep, it would probably appear to be that arrow is what killed him. Hey, I'm just going to search him for any other clues. Okay. Yeah, you search. You don't find any kind of coins. You don't find any kind of jewelry. No weapons. Nothing like that. The only thing that he had was that piece of parchment. What's up, Redler? Good to see you, buddy. I, I, turned, I turned up Bay a little bit. And just kind of maybe inspect things. Let's see if there's any humans still alive there, and if the rats maybe haven't killed them already. If they have, to be honest, I think. No, no, we should, we should definitely search and see if there's any survivors, even if we don't see any. You're starting to get towards that that sin bin, weren't you? <laughs> <laughs> um. No, I'm struggling with my fear of the rats versus uh -oh. trying to save the innocent. All right, so you travel a couple more hours after this encounter with this, this dead human. And you follow the road. You start to approach it because, remember, Rodgar, he gave you that map. And off into the distance, you start to spy the village. And you can see that there is a, a, an earth rampart. 
that's topped by a stout fence that acts as protection for the village. And then, of course, in the front, it's broken by a where a double gate is. From where you're at, it looks like the gate is closed. And you can also see that the stream is now starting to, the, uh, the rat the rat run stream, the rat run river, I'm sorry, it's starting to run uh, parallel with the, the village of Dunross as the stream kind of goes into or under the, the palisade that surrounds and protects Dunross. And of course, you know, in, the, in this, this small stream or river, there are chunks of ice that are bobbing up and down uh, that's, you know, keeping the stream running. And as you approach, you can see a group of burly guards that are sitting on top of a bunch of barrels that they're using as seats. And they're just kind of paying no attention to you until you, they see you turn onto the small little side path that leads up to where they're sitting on the barrels and the big double gate. And as you approach, one of the one of the burly guards jumps down from the barrels, and he calls out for you to halt. He says, "Halt!" And the other burly guards they all stand up on top of the barrels, and they all have crossbows, and they level them as they lower them to you, uh, and they're looking for uh, you to comply to the burly guard's command of halting. As we stop, I hold it <laughs> and Sorry. say, hold your fire. We are here to give assistance. I'm the merciful okay. daughter of Euler, mother of light, and the great healer. Show me to your wounded. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I would go ahead and I would turn back if I were you, says that grumpy looking, uh, grumpy Gus looking guard he says the village is now under quarantine and no one can enter and then he just kind of ignores you and he spits and then he walks back over to the barrels and then he turns around at you again and you can give me a a persuasion check I think one of the the skills in Savage Worlds is persuasion yes yeah. Persuasion. You can give me a I've, persuasion I've check. Now. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for reminding me. Oh, very nice. So you get his attention, and he turns around and he says, Did you say that you're a, a sister of mercy? Did you say that you were a yes, priest? Don't you have someone in there you care about? Of, of course. My family's in there, but when I'm told by the mayor that... The town is under quarantine. I I have to listen to Mayor Rudker. Mayor Umbold Rudker. Does but I'll tell you what. Your family. Well, I'll tell you what, little lady. Dulcetter needs you. And I'll tell you what. There's lots of disease inside of there right now. So I'll let you in. But just be wary. There's rats everywhere, my lady. There are hundreds, if not thousands, of those little dastardly blighters running around everywhere inside of their brother. They've eaten up most of the su- <laughs> They've eaten up most <laughs> They've eaten up most of the supplies and they're spreading this disease, the pox among all of the citizens. This started about a week ago. And it was just a few at first, then more, and then more, every day. We've tried to get rid of them, but it seems like nothing works. Even the rat catcher, even he's been working overtime. His name is Jeb Three Toes. His foot fell into a wood chipper many years ago, so he, he lost, he was missing a couple toes before he was pulled out. But anyway, even Jeb's working overtime, yeah. So, I'll tell you what. what. What was that, dwarf? So I know it's a pain of wood chippers. Look at my face. 
What in the hell happened to you? A wood chipper? Oh, Jesus Christ. Yep. You got the face only a mother could love. He he tells the other oh, burly... Right after it. <laughs> well, then you don't need her, then. If she doesn't love you because what you for the way you look, then screw her. So he turns around and he, he gives a, a whistle to the other guards that are, you know, has they have their crossbows leveled down towards you. And he says, go ahead and let him in, boys. And then a couple of them jump down and they open up the double gates to the, uh, to the double fence. And then as you can, you know, as you look inside and then the, the guard tells you, Welcome to Dunross, and he kind of laughs a little bit. And this is this is a small map of Dunross here. Now, as you guys, you know, get the horses going again, and you start traveling into Dunross, the guard was absolutely right. He wasn't joking about these rats. These these rats are swarming everywhere. It looks like. It looks like the old man, the old road warden, these things are carpeting the ground. You know, there's people running around all over the place. These rats are jumping up on people, some of them the size of dogs, biting people's legs. They're scratching and climbing over each other, clawing out the doors and whatnot. Clamoring up, they're all over the roofs, all over the bales of hay. These things are everywhere. And as your wagon is moving forward, it is accompanied with the sounds of squealing rats as the wheels just crunch and crush them beneath it. But there's no sign of any cats. It's probably because the rats ate them. (laughs) Waka, waka, waka. There's a couple dogs running about. And they have a bunch of rats all over them, and they're thrashing all around. But they looks like they're trying to snap and get the rodents that are scurrying all over the place. Now, another thing that you see are a couple of huge, and you saw this as you were approaching Dunross, a hup, couple of huge black pillars of smoke. And these are from massive bonfires of nothing but, but uh, dead rats that are fueling these fires. And you can see guards and whatnot just taking wheelbarrows and dumping more of these rats. But it doesn't, it doesn't seem like there's any end of sight with these rats. And the smell of that uh, acrid smoke is just absolutely horrible. So there's like a, like a smoky mist in the air also as you go inside of Dunross. I would think it would smell like barbecue. <laughs> There's a buffet. There's a buffet. And then one of them says, why don't you go over there and get yourself a plate, young lady? Get you. There's all kinds of different rat. Rat gumbo, barbecue rat, rat on a stick, like in the Chinese buffets. Mm. Does it come with that right? What was that? This might be a good time for a break. Does it come with ale? <laughs> No, we're all out of that. The rats drank it all. But yeah, let's go ahead and take a break. So you guys are in Dunross now. There's there's some barracks. There's a stables. There's an inn. There's the mayor's house. There is a a, a shrine to Eostra. There's a a general store, an herbalist, and then there's a... Old Three Toes Rat Catcher, and then there's the uh, all of the granaries that are in the middle there, and the Granary Master's House. So, what say you, adventurers, as you're seeing this carnage in Dunross? Well, I'd say we drop off our cart somewhere and try and help with this uh, rat infestation. Yeah, maybe we should check the inn. If if there's any injured, they're probably being taken there. Sure. You can go over to the inn. The inn is uh, building number three there in the corner, which would be the, I guess, the lower left-hand corner. There's an inn. 
Sarah, and sure, there's. Can you point us to building number three? <laughs> uh, building number three is that away? There's a sign that says building number three. Right in the middle, there's there oh. is a there's a post. Yes, exactly. With uh, nine different uh, boards with arrows pointing to it. And then you can see this floating gold three in the corner of Dunrosset. And it's just kind of pulsing. This is building number three in yellow letters and numbers. <laughs> According to the legend, this is it. We can always leave our exactly. wagon and horses at the stables right next to the inn. I don't, I don't think that would be a good idea. Uh, I would keep it moving if I were you. That's what a one of the guards says, and they're they're like I said, there are rat. There's no way that you're going to be able to kill all of these rats. This place is full of rats. I mean, it is literally full. But you know that you have to pick up good old uh, Rodgar's grain over here. So if you want to take the guys, want to take the wagon over, or you can stop it, go to the stable, whatever you want to do. You can do whatever. I'm just trying to tell you that hey, it may not be a good idea to leave that leave that uh, that wagon and horses sitting somewhere. It may not yes, be a well, good thing. Well, I, well, I check on these guys, see if I can do any help. I don't so know. You maybe just... maybe you can find out if 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 that guy's grain is still here at all, or maybe check on the mayor and see if there's anything else we can do. Right now, sure. I'm gonna run in the sand and take care of these people as you know anyone that I can. Well, actually, as you look over towards the shrine to Eostra, there's actually a lot of wounded on cots and stuff outside of the shrine, and there's like a there's a a fence that's up around the wounded, with a couple okay. of the acolytes kind of smashing it. rats. Yeah, exactly. It was over to your right. But it doesn't look like it's the end. It looks like it's more of the of the shrine. Okay. Same speech, but I'm good to head here. Okay. So you meet a priestess of Eostra, and her name is Agnes Leafdown. And and as you as you go up to her and, and offer your assistance and you know give give her your, your grand introduction. Uh, she tells you, oh, she says, oh, the, the gods are judging us unworthy, uh, and Eosra is not protecting us. Uh, and she says, I, and you actually see that she's created a, a thorn of, you know, a wall of thorns. And she says that the rats are just now starting to, you know, break through the thorns, and they're coming in through the stream now. And Agnes tells you that she's used all of her power to as much as she could to try to control the beast but these rat it's just no use there's just too many of them and she she thinks that she's telling you that she thinks that some foul summoner has brought forth all of these beasts to dunross and she says oh they're she they're probably using some type of fell magic it's it's just disastrous and even my ability to create food and, and cannot even feed all the villagers. We are in trouble. We, uh, we, I, I fear the hand of the dark gods are at work here. Do I see oh. magic narrative? Give me a, give me a smarts arcane roll. <sighs> Sorry, I was taking a drink. Yeah, you you're uh you sense magic at work here. Whether it be from the the thorny wall or but there's ma it seems like there is magic all around you, yes. How long ago did the rats start attacking? Uh she said, "Oh, uh probably about probably a little over a week ago now." And you can see the acolytes are smashing rats as they're climbing over the the uh, thorned wall. Do you have any strange visitors during that time? Uh, not, not that I know of. Not at the, not at the temple. Maybe, maybe if you talk to uh, Mayor Rutger, maybe he could have some more information. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I thought that Dunross was on quarantine. How did you get in here? I'm here to help the wounded. 
Oh, well, uh, Flora, she calls over a uh, another. She's a healer. She's not an actual acolyte. She doesn't, you know, she's not wearing the the regalia that uh, that the priestess is. And she introduces you as a. She introduces herself as uh, Flora Godwin Sutter, and she is a sister of mercy, and she's an herbalist, and she also dabbles in a little bit of the the healing arts on the side. Uh, but she's here just for treating basic injuries and whatnot. Uh, she doesn't look like she has any kind of magical magical power uh, power or anything like that. And then and you know as you're kind of helping her out with uh, some of the the injuries and stuff, she says, "Oh, these these rats are going to be the death of us." And she says, "They've they've eaten most of the flour already here in Dunross, and 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 it seems like their bites are are spreading disease, and 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 I don't have the magic to stop that." And it seems like everybody is riddled with fleas as well. And then she itches her head a little bit when she says that. <laughs> she says, healing but fortunately... Giving, healing and giving aid without the blessings of Eater. This is what you would run into. Uh, well, far. yes, I, I'm a priestess of, of Eater as well. And, and if you could lend a quick hand, that would be, that would be nice of you, sister. Uh, but she says, if you get bitten... Uh, there's a chance, well, there's actually a really good chance that uh, the bite will swell up and then you'll, the area will start to go numb. And that's, if you're lucky anyway, because many of the folk, uh, it seems like their blood turns black. And then when it reaches the brain, they develop a raging brain fever. And many have died. And then she kind of points over towards a, a huge stack of bodies that, that are in like these uh, large burlap sacks. And she says, oh, my, my stock of, of healing herbs have, has totally run out and it's all I can do to, to help, uh, help the priestess here to, just to clean the wounds and, and stop the sickness from spreading. Well, let me help as much as I can then. Okay. And you do. You help her out for a little while. So, Jot and Fargus, what are you guys doing as, as you know, you guys are... I guess you're maybe still with the wagon, or are you inside of the the temple here with with mercy, or or what? I'd say let's go to the mayor's house and see if we can find out more about the rats. Okay. Not so not very sociable, but I'll try. All right, so Mercy, uh, if you want to stay there and help with uh, some of the healing and whatnot, you can do that. And maybe, I don't know, you guys, you can go over and check out. Uh, I just missed the dwarves. Uh, I got the business to attend to here. Okay. Maybe you guys can meet up at the uh, at the granary or something like that when you're done, after they go to the mayor, mayor's house or something like that. Maybe that would work out for you guys. Sounds good. All right. So you head over to the to the mayor's house, and you know you knock on the door and whatnot. He he answers. Well, actually, one of the servants answers the door, and he goes and gets Mayor Rutger, and he comes out and he says, <coughs> "This is a this is an absolute disaster. Everything edible is gone." And this this guy is this guy is a uh, he's a large man. And he says, everything is edible. That is that is edible. It's almost gone. And, oh, dear gods, what have we done to deserve all of this pestilence? Uh, uh, I, I, I've sent out a message to try to get more soldiers from Oslov. Uh, but I sent that messenger over a week ago, and I haven't heard anything. Nothing. And what do we pay taxes for? What do I pay a tithe for? And they have forsaken us. This is unbelievable, but I'm sure your business here is important. Uh, so, what are you here for, my friends? We just came from Aslov, actually. Uh, well, do you, you wouldn't happen to see a contingency of guards coming this way, would you? No, nope. I would hope. Ran hope. into forks along the way, dispatched to them, and ran into a road warden who was attacked by rats as well. Oh, so, so we're not the only ones being attacked by rats. 
What is this? Is, is every rat and wrestling here in the area? What's going on? Uh, I don't know if I should evacuate the village. I don't know. This this weather is getting bad. Winter is almost here. Uh, I I think it would be insane of me to to evacuate the village. I, we we have to protect the granaries. That's that's what we have to do. The outlying villages, they trust us and they need these supplies. I I don't know what to do. I, this is something that I wasn't trained for. Has anybody strange showed up recently in the last week or so? Not that I know of. I I don't know. Um I I unless it, somebody at the temple came or maybe somebody came to the general store or I I, I have no clue. Maybe the granaries I I don't know. I usually take care of all of my work here. Of course, you know I do. Show face and go out and pitch a couple babies' cheeks once in a while and wave to everybody from the porch as I'm having lunch or dinner or onesies or twosies. Try their pie as I tap them on the belly. <laughs> yeah, but it seems like this mayor, he, he just doesn't know what to do. He says, well, uh, I've, got, I've got some more pressing matters to worry about. Uh, I, I'm, I'm sorry, my friends, but you're going to have to excuse me. And uh, he actually doesn't even say anything else. And Enjoy he just dessert. I walk out the door. <laughs> well, that's what I'm trying to wrangle up right now, actually. <laughs> and he shuts the door. The general goods store is closed. Yeah, he said it's about gone. The store's closed. The herbalist store is, is closed, obviously, because the herbalist, she's over there at the at the temple helping the, the wounded. Uh, you run into a, a rat catcher as yeah, you guys are... Let's try and find the rat catcher. As, as, as you guys are heading over to the granary, you meet a, uh, a very solely looking character. And he's got this hound with him, this big brown hound. And, you know, he's actually coming out of his uh, rat catcher store. He actually has a rat catcher store. And it says, uh, Jeb Three Toes Acme Rat Catching. And he says, Oh, business has never been so good, my friends. He goes, Do you need some rat catching? Oh, you're, I don't think you're from around here. Oh. No, we can help with the rat catching. Oh, well, we've always, well, if you're good at catching rats, you're in the right place. And he kind of chuckles a little bit. And he says, the rats have been coming in for over about a week now. Uh, of course, we always had rats here in, in Dunross, but but never like this. So me and old Snapper here, as he, as he pats his dog a couple of times, and Snapper's only got one eye. And he says, me and old Snapper, we can't handle all of them. Uh... So he says, uh, these rats are vicious, so be careful. They're biting and snapping at all the good folk around here. And I wouldn't suggest eating them, but old Snapper, he's ate a few. Boy, his gases has been horrible the last couple of days. And then the doll kind of goes, <laughs> But old, old Jeb says he's, he's never seen so many rats at once. And he's been doing this job. Well, not he, but I've been doing this job for about 20 years now. Uh, I can go ahead and sign you up to the Rat Catching Guild if you want. The rates of pay are pretty good. It's uh, about one silver for every 10 rats. A man could make a fortune in a day here in Dunross. <laughs> well, that's, of course, if he, if he survives the pox and all. And then he says, I gotta go! And then he just kind of streaks off to one of the other buildings. And, and old, old uh, Snapper's just taking rats out left and right. <laughs> so busy. All right, then I guess we'll go. We're just oh, yeah. In. Well, yeah, there's, there's thousands of uh, rats around. The inn is actually closed. It said closed. The, the inn's closed. Uh, so is the... The store, the general store is closed. The herbalist store is closed also. Right, well, I guess Stables are closed. The, uh, head to the shrine, I guess. Yeah it, looks like, yeah, it looks like there's a bunch of dead horses at the stables. A whole carpet, a whole 
looks like a cover, like a blanket of rats just gnawing on dead horses laying down. All right, so you get back to the to the temple, and Mercy's still assisting both the priestess and the herbalist. Did you find anything out, Mercy? I found out the little people are sick. How about you? It's probably about 20 or 30 people sick here, and there's probably about 30 dead, 30 or 40 dead behind you, too. Any news from the bear? He's hoarding food. He, we could probably raid his house and feed the village for another week if we have to. I think the best thing for the village is to get out of this village. Give it to the rats. What about the granaries? Is our package even here? We haven't gotten there yet, but if we evacuate the village, then we lose the granaries and then all the surrounding towns. Well, we'll die over winter. Yeah, you can actually see the the grain storing facilities are right across that bridge. Mm, you're right, of course. Yeah, I shouldn't get but, the granaries to the rats after all. Yeah, the priestess she she looks over at you and she says, "Do you think we really need to? Uh, do you think we really need to to leave Dunross? Where would we go?" Not everyone, I think. I think we should certainly get the sick out. Maybe set up a camp outside. If the, the rats aren't out there. Maybe oh, that... women, children. And... I, I, I think you might be right, my sister. I, I think we probably should. It's, it seems like just about everything is lost here. Well, we still need to fight for the granaries. But there's no reason to put the, the weak in harm's way while we do it. Well, I think you're right. Maybe maybe I'll, I'll send a messenger over to the mayor and uh, maybe we'll start making preparations to to leave Dunross at once. Fawcett, thanks for the follow. Appreciate it. So do you guys, where do you guys want to go over to the granaries? It seems like everything else is pretty much closed. If, if we've kind of got this together here now, and I think we've got her on a path of getting the sick people out of the town, and at least women and children out of the town, then maybe yeah, she... I can go with the others and we can check on the granary, see if, see if our package is even here. Okay. Yeah, she says she's going to take care of it. She's already sent a messenger off. So yeah, she she thanks you for your help, and she says, "Ah, uh, may may blessings uh, be with you." And you know, she kind of puts her hand on your shoulder and kind of nods. Thank you. Maybe Ira uh, protect you all. Ah uh, yes, hopefully, hopefully we have not done anything wrong to discourage the gods. So across this little. On the east side of the village, across where the stream and the bridge is, there are those three huge granary buildings. And as you guys are taking the, the wagon across the bridge, of course, the rats aren't as bad on the east side as the rats are on the left side. I will, I will tell you that. But, you know, as the wagon's still trekking towards the granaries, you can still hear the wheels crunching rats every once in a while. So as you're as you're approaching the granaries, all of a sudden uh, an older scruffy gentleman, hunchbacked man comes over and he limps over towards you, and he waves for you to stop and and uh, you can see that he's swatting a couple of rats away with his gnarled stick and it's got like this huge big ball on one end, like a almost like a flail but a stick, and and he says, oh my friends. Uh, uh, I'm I'm the mastery of the granaries here in Dunross. Uh, he goes, uh, my name is Ulfwin. Uh, do you have business here, good sirs? I, I see that you have a wagon. Do you have the, the petition and the mock? Oh, and, yeah. I, and I and I and and hope the gods that your your product isn't ate by all of these rats. And and he he takes a look at. Uh, 
all of the documentation that Rodgar has given you. And he says, oh, right this way, citizen man. And then he looks over towards you, Mercy, and he says, you don't look like the type that would be doing farming type of work. So he hops onto the wagon with all of you guys, and he points over, oh, there it is. That's it right there, number two. And the mark of, like I said, the mark of Rodgar is a, a loaf of bread with a couple of barley stalks sticking out of the loaf of bread. And, uh, oh, <laughs> right? He says, here it is right here. That's the one, number two. I, 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 I'm, I do must say, though, my friends, uh, this is most unexpected. I, I wasn't expecting anyone from Dolcetter so soon. Uh, but still, it's, it, it's still the second time in, in recent days, and all these strange things have been happening. So, honestly, I, I'm, really, I'm really not that surprised, to be honest. I'm surprised. Could, could you tell me of strange things? <sighs> well, it seems I don't know if we're cursed or, or the gods are mad, but... It seems like the last person that came and got a delivery was just a handful of hours before the rats started to come. And it was actually a rather large train of wagons that belonged to the owner of one of the other granaries. And he looted all of his flour. He took all of the entire contents, which was actually quite a bit, I may say. And, and he did have two granaries. And... Now, um, a master, masterful stroke of bad luck has, has fallen on us, but he has had a stroke of good fortune because now all of his flour is out of here. Uh, he must be so devout to, to whatever god he, he, he worships to receive such a blessing. Uh, Sir, can you tell me what is his symbol? Uh, he takes you over to the granary that's to the left. Which is, uh, here, let me get out a, a little marker for you. It's actually going to be a fairly big marker. But this is the one that you're going to right here in the middle. Oh, okay. And that's, that's, uh, that's granary number two. Well, over here on the left-hand side, that is granary number one. And it's to the left of Rodgar's. And... It has uh, the merchant's mark that's on the double doors there is an apple tree with a sheaf of wheat beneath it. And Altwin has, he says, I have no idea who owns the greenery or where they came from. Uh, all I know is that he had the proper documentation with the marks and he... I have to give him the granary. It doesn't matter to me because all I all I care about is if he has the proper uh, paperwork. But I know that the, he did mention his name, the man that was the leader of this wagon train, and he said his name. Let me check my records here. And he, he reaches into his, his uh, vest and he pulls out a, a small little leathery journal. And he starts flipping through pages and whatnot. And then he says, oh, here it is right here. Otto Edmondsonu. I think, yeah, Otto Edmondsonu. And he said, uh, he mentioned that he was going to Dalsetter. Okay. I'll pull out the parchment and the pen and write this down. Okay. Yep, Otto Edmondsonu. And he was the one that picked up, uh, he said he had granary one to the north and granary one to the south too, where the marker is right now. If I, have, what do you know of a symbol with the lowercase d and two barley signs? Uh, well, that's that's, isn't that the symbol that you have? And he checks over the, the. Oh, he goes, no, you have a a loaf of bread. Uh. I I have that. That's that's storage house number three. What I'm trying but, to recall is the the markings on the barrels from the uh, the root warden's tower. Hmm. 
says, I, I don't know who the owner is. And he, he checks his documentation. He says, uh, there, there, was, there was something about two, I'd say about two weeks ago or so now, that was taken out. And it, it was bound for Doll Sutter as well. We found, we found evidence of this on the way to Oslo. Hmm. It had been overrun by rats also. Well, uh, he, 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 hmm. Oh, oh, wait a minute here. It, it seems like I, I, I'm looking. Okay, I'm sorry, I, I read my journal wrong. It, it's, it seems like there were two wagons that came by about another almost a week ago and I wasn't here to take care of it my assistant was I told him to fill out the, the proper protocol I, I'm going to have to to talk to him about that who's your uh, assistant? Uh, my, my, assistant's na- my assistant's name is Hank and he was the one that actually let two wagons leave and, and now that I'm looking at it it is barley stalks with, uh, with the lowercase letter D under it and it seems like these wagons came, picked up flour, and it seems like they were heading to the citadel, to the north. Hmm. Again, we found them on the way to Oslo. The opposite direction. Huh. Really? Well, oh my goodness. Maybe we can go ahead and get our grain loaded up on this wagon, and... Do you know where Hank is? I'd like to talk to him about that. Uh, unfortunately, Hank was killed by the rats. He died a couple of days ago by, with the fever, and I, I'm having a hard time accepting it. I, I just keep ignoring that he's dead. But he is. Sorry. Oh, it's it's no problem. He was my assistant for many years. He was gonna He was going to take over the business when I retired in a couple of weeks. Well... What of his family? Maybe I can go give my condolences. All of his family are dead. They were killed by an orc raid years ago. Very well. But here you go. It's number two here. And he takes the... You know, he's got a, a key ring with a bunch of different uh, skeletal keys on it. And he gets the key and he unlocks the lock and he says, it's all yours. I would, I would gather it as quick as I could and, and I would get out of here as fast as I could. This place is cursed, I tell you. Cursed! You wouldn't happen to have any ideas who cursed the place. Oh, I have no idea, but I didn't know there were this many rats. Oh, the rats are everywhere. Look at them. They're everywhere, is he? As he takes his club and smacks one, and you can hear the bones crunching. Once we get our wagon loaded up, can we check out Granary 1 on the north and south? Yeah, sure. Yeah, absolutely. So as, as the uh, as Alfon opens up the, the double doors to your granary, you can, you can see that there are some damaged sacks because as you open it up there are a bunch of rats there's a bunch of rats crawling in the bags crawling all over the bags and it looks like as you kind of survey the inside of the uh, the granary of the 50 sacks that are there it looks like probably about 30 to 35 sacks are okay to take but some have you know definitely been damaged so it's going to take about an hour to 45 minutes to an hour to get all of these loaded. And uh, you can you can definitely check out Granary 1 if you want to. And, yeah, you got about 45 minutes or so. Because uh, an, another couple of uh, above a stable hands, they come over and, and help load the sacks up also. Yeah, I just want to check out the empty granaries that a guy took everything and left. The rats and babies. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I'll go with. Okay. Yeah, you can get you can go ahead and take a look. So and uh all Alflin, he even goes over and unlocks the door for you. He says, Do you think there's something foul here? Do you think something is uh do you think something evil is amiss? And he 
unlocks the, the door for you and he swings open the granary doors. So why don't you two at the uh, at granary number one, why don't you guys give me notice rolls? <clears throat> All right. So there's no activity in this as he swings the door open. There's literally nothing in here. There's no paw prints. There's nothing. No sacks. Nothing. Now, however, uh, Mercy, I will say this. You do notice that there are some strange markings carved on the inside of the doors and on the, the actual seals of the door, too. So why don't you give me a Knowledge Arcana or Knowledge or, or Religion check? Okay. And also, Fargus, look at these. Yeah, I can't read. But you can still do an unskilled check, so... I want to use a Benny and reroll. Sure. You got six Bennies. You want to keep rerolling? That'll do. All right. You notice that these symbols are from the god of Eostra, the goddess of nature. And, you know, it is common knowledge to know that. And these runes are sort of like a warding. And these don't have any magical powers. But it looks like, especially with this being with Eostra, uh, it seems like she's also, well, she is the goddess of, of nature and the goddess of agriculture, but these runes are probably to protect the granary, protect the contents within. Fargus looks like we might need to go back to the temple. Although, I do want to go back to the other granaries and see if there are similar symbols. Sure, you can go inside of the inside of the other uh, granary number two, where the other uh, granary hands are helping load all of the thirty to thirty-five bags of flour into your wagon. Sure. You want to check out the other empty granary? Well, in the in the other granary, that's that's across. Uh, let's see. Because didn't you say that guy came and emptied two granaries? He did. Yeah. Yeah. You guys were just checking this granary here. Now, as for granary west, number one, this granary here. Yeah, okay. there. there's more. Yeah, I, somebody keeps moving these. Yeah. Yeah. The, where it's at right now, the marker, that's granary east, number one. All right. That is where... That's where Ulf one just took you. And the other granary that was empty was West. He calls it Granary West number one. And that is where the other granary was. And that's where you guys walk over to to check for the runes. And yes, there are more identical runes like there was in Granary number one. Basically, they're runes and symbols of the god Eostra. And these are to help ward off any kind of uh, evil and to protect the actual contents within the granary. Do we notice if the rats avoid the outside of the door? <clears throat> yeah, there's been, there, it doesn't look like there's any, any rats at all that have been in here. There's no rat droppings or anything. Now in yours, which is uh, East number two, that has rat droppings and all kinds of shit and there are all kinds of dead rats from eating too much and just dying and yeah so there's a big difference between your granary and the two granaries that have already been emptied but the uh, the ones with the runes on the inside do the rats avoid the outside of the doors as well do they give like a wide berth uh, it doesn't seem like yeah it, it that's what it looks like yeah because it doesn't look like those granaries have been disturbed at all and granary number three to the east, that granary has also been undisturbed. 
Because remember, Alphonse said that he rechecked his journal and then his assistant, Hank, he's the one that actually had the work order to release all of the, the flour from this granary. Oh, for, didn't you say that Aldo Edmondsono got his grains before the rats came? Uh, yes, yes, ma'am. It probably, with a good stroke of luck, it seems like he was just a couple of hours uh, uh, ahead of the plague of rats that started invading Dunross. Such a, a good stroke of luck, I would say. He's in good with the gods, that's for sure. Do you know who put these symbols on these walls? Or is, is that common? Uh, we have had that in the past, yes, but not lately. It's supposed to be, and he's checking his, his journal again, and he says, well, th there was nothing, I have nothing that they were going to do that, so uh, my records don't indicate that. Usually there's an extra fee when they want to put some type of blessing or protection, and usually one of the priests would do it, but there's nothing on my records to indicate that any blessings were done. But it's not, you, you said that uh, it was the blessing of Eostra, if I'm not mistaken. Well, we don't, yeah, we, we, uh, that's, that's funny. Funny how? Well, I'm, let's see, I'm looking at, uh, this is, it, it seems like I don't have any records from, from the priestess of Eostra because she would come over here and do that. But I have no records indicating so. Whoever put those runes, it was not our priestess. So it had to have been someone else. Thanks for the follows, guys. I appreciate it. Hmm. For I guess we want to look at this other granary where the uh, arrow is pointing. Yeah, the one that's undisturbed. Yeah, it's, it's empty as well. There's a there's a little bit of rat droppings and stuff in there, but for the most part, it it's pretty clean, because he tell he told you that his assistant Hank, he emptied he emptied this granary out six days ago, and the rats this, this they the started showing up. Right? Yeah, exactly. Is any markings in here? Nope, nope. Just in just the west one and east one. There were none in yours and none in, in East number three. Well, what do you think here. it is? I don't know, but I intend to find out. I think the guy who left the two wagon bulls is part of it. Uh, you know what, now that I'm looking at my records and, and there are these these runes of protection inside of the granary, I think there could be something amidst. I, I think there might be a little bit more to this than, than just being a little lucky. Because we never hardly ever get anyone emptying out two full granaries. Now that I think about it, it, it does seem a little foul. And it's odd to have the protection here, yet remove the grain before the rats get here. Uh, I, I agree. Especially just a few hours before before the rats infested Dunross. Hey, what's up, Montrevant? Good to see you, man. Well, let's get back to our cart. Maybe they're finished. We need to stop by the temple. Yeah, it's about... It's been about an, about an hour or so. And, uh... All of the bags are, are loaded up. All 30 to 35 bags are, are all loaded up. Alt when he, he says, I, I, hope, uh, I hope you find out what's going on, milady. Why don't you send a messenger to me and uh, hopefully let me know what's going on. And he swats a couple more rats away. Ah, oh, these dastardly things. If I find out anything new, I'll let you know. I think Thank you, my lady. This green. Thank you, my lady. All right, so just as barely as the last sack of flour is loaded on, loaded and secured onto your wagon, all of a sudden you start to hear high-pitched screams. 
They're starting to echo across the entire village of Dunross. And looking around, you can see that there is a woman that is, that is clutching her face with one hand and pointing towards the western wall over by where the inn is and also where the, uh, the I think it's the herbalist store. No, yeah, the, the mayor's house. So over that wall, it is a solid, I mean, this is a, this is a sight because you see nothing but an eerie black mass of rats that are just a huge black mass that is boiling over the fence. And then the fence starts rocking back and forth. And these are rats. <laughs> oh my God. A vast horde of rats. So then all of a sudden you start to hear another scream. Another scream from the east to the west. <laughs> what now? Look, I'm in a Hitchcock movie. Oh, oh yeah, uh, sort of, kind of. And the wall just collapses, and these rats are just gnashing and hissing and biting, and even old Jeb Threetos, the rat catcher, he gets just swarmed. And there's just rats upon rats upon rats, and some of these rats are even the size of a small pony. And the ones with the small pony, their size of the small pony, their eyes are glowing yellow. And it looks like they have this malicious intent. And panic sweeps across the entire village in just a few mere seconds with all, all of this screaming going on and whatnot. And as you guys are watching, villagers are literally being dragged down to the ground under the weight of all the rats. And they're being viciously attacked. And just being ate alive. And you can start to smell like a scent of blood that's starting to fill the air. So what do you guys want to do? It doesn't look like there's absolutely no chance of saving this village. If you thought there was no chance now, there's absolutely no chance now to save the village. <laughs> there is an, an infinite amount of rats in here. Are the rats too thick to drive the wagon through right now? No, you can get... Uh, they're just starting to come across that west wall. And the only exit out of this place are are the two exits. And one of them doesn't have any kind of doors for a wagon. So you guys are going to have to bolt out of there quick on that wagon. And that door is out by the stables at number two? Uh, the, the door number two, the one that's on the right-hand side right here, this is where the river flows out, so it's not a road. No, it's meant by the stables, which is... Yeah, the stables building, is number two. Building number two. Yeah, building number two. Yep. That, yeah, I was just fixing to move it. This is where you want to get out. Exactly. Okay. That's it. So you would basically take the road go back over the bridge and you're gonna have to crush a bunch of rats so yep all right well let's get in the wagon and go all right this is uh rat apocalypse so so i think i think a round in savage worlds is 10 seconds i think so in about 10 seconds as uh, as you leave the granaries you get to about right here now i'm gonna pull up a i'm gonna pull up a map and this map is going to have a wall, but just ignore the wall for now. All right. This is a this is my map making skill, so don't laugh too bad. And I'm going to put you guys on the tracker. Where are you go? Oh, there you guys. I'm going to put you guys here, here, and here. You guys can go ahead and put yourselves on the wagon as to where you would be. So you guys can put yourselves on. And if you guys are cool there, I'm going to use this map just as, as you guys are to the first point, which is uh, right here.
All right, so where's my map of Dunross? Here it is. So you guys are, after about 10 seconds, you get across the bridge, and this is round one. And this is not a chase scene. We're not going to do a chase, although we are going to do every type of different encounter in this game. So I'm going to minimize this. 